Happy Saturday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, 13th of Saturday. I thought I'd spend the first uh, couple minutes here showing you some of the highlights as I uh, took the family up to Niagara Falls, Canada. Not the perfect weather, but again, uh, broke out at the right time. So we'll let you uh, watch the first couple minutes of the highlights of, uh, again, the total eclipse as seen from Niagara Falls, Canada. <laughs> So as you can see, the crowd goes wild, and uh, the little eyes of the eight-year-old were just as uh, just loving everything about this today. So again, uh, neat experience for sure. Uh, one thing for sure here is going from a strong El Nino to a strong La Nina. Recall last time the CFS models, uh, bottom left there, actually projected this strong El Nino uh, last year, and uh, other models were not going as bullish. So again, uh, we're going to lean that way too. We do believe it's another strong La Nina transition here, and this will have a Huge implications to the world weather patterns as we transition here over the next uh, months and uh, season ahead. And one thing is just the uh, hurricanes. Hurricanes could be off the scale here in 2024 in the Atlantic Basin as the wind shear and everything decreases and just record warm water temperatures uh, in the South Atlantic tropical main development regions. We can also look below the water surface. There's a cross section of the uh, Pacific Ocean from Indonesia to Ecuador. And again, uh, you can see all that subsurface below, Nova, below normal, actually much below normal water temperatures bubbling to the surface in the equatorial, eastern equatorial Pacific. Uh, so again, no tell of that size about it. We are definitely headed for a strong La Nina. You can already see the signs of the El Nino. And uh, again, it definitely did a number on the drought. We had uh, the three-year La Nina drought. And then now we have 38% of the country in dry to drought phases, uh, which is very low. Normally, we'd be about 46% of the country in dry to drought phases. So the wettest in four years, eighth wettest in 24 years in terms of uh, drought coverage. Even that area there in Iowa is less misleading in terms of uh, severe to extreme drought. That's really not the case if we look at the last four and a half months here of rainfall since uh, since about Christmas. Again, uh, Iowa, state of Iowa, second wettest in 39 years. U.S., uh, obviously, number one wettest and um, 
potentially 125 years. So near record wet conditions. So again, very good growing conditions. Again, they're going to have uh, a lot of soil moisture there from uh, Indiana, uh, Illinois, Iowa. Again, hard the corn belt. So it looks like a, a good crop season as these uh, farmers get planting out there. Don't plant too early because we do think there's going to be a frost here in May. Last week, world summer here, ending here today, 13 April, here in the U.S. Uh, again, 0.4 warmer than last year, fifth warmest in 39 years. Wet, 125% wetter than a year ago, number one wettest in uh, 39 years. So warm and wet was kind of the theme. Um, again, we look at other parts of the country. Again, a lot of the country you see, the world you see is, is wet. And again, we can blame two things, uh, El Nino and the uh, Tonga volcano a couple years ago just pump tons and tons of water vapor up in the atmosphere, and it'll be up there for probably five, six more years at least. Um, so again, El Nino and all that tongue of moisture uh, certainly is making the world a very wet place. And when you put that moisture in the atmosphere, you also make it a kind of a greenhouse gas. So you keep it warmer. So warm and wet is kind of the global theme here. We added some uh, tornadoes, hail, and wind events here this past week. Again, 62 more tornadoes, 118 more hail events, and 322 wind events. Right now, hail is leading the pack here, uh, most in seven years. Um, well, tornadoes are down. We definitely had an uptick uh, here this past week, uh, still at least in three years. But uh, we do believe that all of these categories are going to be up as we go ne through the next uh, two and a half, three months. Look at this week here. Again, if you suffer from allergies or asthma suffering, again, this is wall-to-wall, coast-to-coast warm. Again, U.S. overall 3.4 warmer than last year, warm since 7, fifth warm since 39. Precip flat, uh, 15th driest. So warm and dry is what you really want to look for, for allergy suffering. Um, so there in the Midwest, uh, maybe the interior Northeast will get some relief with moisture. But again, a lot of pollen in the air. And again, the only good news is if you get some rain, you can wash it out for a day or two. We look at uh, next week here. Still got to watch out for the severe weather threat. Again, Texas into Illinois, Iowa. Uh, again, get concerned here this time of year when you see this kind of moisture pattern here. But uh, 4.7 warmer nationally than last year. Warmest in five years. 10th warmest in 39 years. Uh, east coast is the cold spot again below average temperatures there um, rainfall again down 34 percent tenth dries 39 years nationally but uh, very wet kind of where they need it uh, in the heartland central u.s um, so again a lot of moisture and potentially severe weather so something to be concerned about uh, as we get into the late part of april here if we aggregate these world two-week outlook trends here through the 27th uh, gen again warm across canada and north america pretty much all the americas cold spots going to be there in uh, parts of central europe uh, Germany, France uh, regions. Um, precip maps inset left here. Look at the total precip here. Again, this is this week, world two week rain and snow outlook. Again, through so even though it's mild, you can still get a lot of snow out there across the Canada. And again, plenty of rain across Brazil. A little bit dry in eastern Brazil, but their main crop regions are doing relatively well here with recent rains. We'll end the video here with some still photos and some time lapse video of uh, Niagara Falls. And uh, again, we'll be back here again this time uh, next week.